This video was recorded in front of a live virtual audience. Hi everybody, Jacob here. Welcome back to my channel today. Thank you, Netflix. <laughs> thank you, Netflix. Nothing. You didn't give me nothing for free. So, but thank you for bringing the show to the world. The Halston series, which, debatable. Do we like it or not? Do we like how uh, Roy was portrayed or not? Yeah. But anyway, you have brought into uh, the memory of the folk this. The Halston perfume, which we're going to review today. Before we get to the review, thumb up this video. Let the YouTube algorithm know that we're doing something right here. And also subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. You can also push the join button next to the subscription button and become a member today. Gain access to extra perks. You can also join me on Patreon, Super Deco Ball spelled together there as well, to gain access to extra perks there as well. Thank you to all my patrons and members who have already pledged. Without you, the Fashion Bunker would not be here. And thank you to my live chatters and co-reviewers. This video is being filmed live in front of a virtual audience. And if you wish to partake in a live filming of the Fashion Bunker, I live stream every Saturday. So join me on my live stream journey and be in the in the chat, uh, be a reviewer or a co-converser. Uh, con <laughs> Converse with me through the chats live every Saturday. That's when we pre-record these uh, videos together. Halston. We can turn it this way. We could turn it that way. It kind of has an angle, doesn't it? It goes that way, falling a tilted downwards. A little bit erected, tilted upwards. This is the current formulation of Halston Natural Spray Cologne. 3.4 fluid ounces or 100 ml. Distributed by Elizabeth Arden Fragrances. Made in the U.S. of A, mama. <clears throat> so as the Netflix show aired for the first time and uh, people watched episode three of Halston, where Halston creates his perfume with Vera Farmiga sniffing so voluptuously a jockstrap, uh, upon seeing that jockstrap sniffology going down, people bought this perfume en masse. So it's it's produced in low quantities. It's not a bestseller. It hasn't been for ages. I mean, this is a 70s release. But could you imagine a perfume from the 70s selling out in 2021 all over again? Why? Just because of a brilliant marketing campaign, which was a TV show. Episode 3 of Halston. Whether you like it or not like it, the show, I mean, or whether you like or not like how Obi-Wan Kenobi portrayed Halston, yes, Ewan McGregor was Obi-Wan Kenobi. For me, Ewan McGregor is always going to be the train spotting dude and Obi-Wan Kenobi. So when I saw Obi-Wan Kenobi as Halston, I was like, but that's a whole other story for another day. Whether you like the series or not, episode three made people flock to this perfume and blindly purchase it because it's not readily available everywhere. It's a very rare and niche perfume nowadays, not distributed all over the place. It's not expensive, but it's still not overly produced because it doesn't sell that much. It's actually a miracle that it's still in production to begin with because this is a Shepra fragrance from the 70s. A formulation of this kind it's just not made today. Uh, new perfumes launched today would never have this sort of DNA in them. And yet, Halston has not been discontinued. It's still in production. Apparently, first um, distributed through Max Factor and then through Halston uh, Cosmetics, which were under Max Factor, I believe. And somewhere down the line, Elizabeth Arden got it. Uh, How and when? I do not know. But now it's under distribution of Elizabeth Arden, the first fragrance by Halston, which is not to be confused with uh, an 80s launched version of Halston called uh, Halston Couture. And Halston Couture has a sterling silver stopper 
or upper part of for the splash bottle, maybe even for the spray bottle, which you got to keep polishing because it oxidizes because it's really made in sterling silver. But this one has a bit of plastic on top. Elsa Peretti, Elsa Peretti, who is also portrayed or um, is given a lot of airtime in the Halston Netflix series. By the way, you can also check out a real Halston documentary. I think on Amazon Prime they have it, uh, which is a documentary on the life of Halston with actual Halston in it. I mean, posthumously shown footage of him. He passed away in the 90s, but you catch my drift. Uh, Netflix, the Netflix series is, uh, a lot of it is invented, okay? While the Halston actual documentary that you could watch uh, is a real documentary. But Elsa Peretti is acted in the show, and Elsa Peretti, uh, who was one of the muses of Halston, also started working uh, for Tiffany and just passed away a very short while ago, uh, designing Tiffany jewelry and a couple of really interesting sterling silver clutches. She designed the bottle, which a lot of people say looks like a penis. Does it though? Not to me. I mentioned this uh, sometime before that maybe it looks like a saggy nipple. <laughs> like more like than somebody mentioned in the chats that it kind of could look like a unicorn horn. A little satchel. You know, Elsa Peretti made a little tiny silver satchel that you could put a flower in and water and then like wore it as a necklace. This is a bit too big for that. But it is kind of cute. The golden liquid matches the golden little um, hardware on this necklace. I have it all. So let's spray it on and see what the magic of Halston is all about. Here goes. Hmm. 1975. Oh, we're in the good old days. We're back in the 70s. This does look a little bit 70s. I'm loving this. On camera, it kind of almost shows it's white, but it is a, is it, it's a beige ochre color, sandy, beigey color. It's, it's a beautiful color. It just makes me go back to the time when they were about to shoot Alien with uh, Ripley Scott, and we're talking Ridley Scott. Uh, we're talking late 70s, though. This is kind of that sandy look that also Star Wars had. It's, it's an aesthetic. The 70s were a lot about brown hues, but also sandy hues, and this is delicious. So, 1975, Bernard, or Bernard Chant, is the nose behind this perfume. And we're going to get to Bernard Chant, because there's a couple of things to say in my booklet here. But the top notes, we got green leaves, mint, melon, bergamot, and peach. This is a Chypre. And we have a peach in the top notes. You know what that means. If there's a peach in the top notes of a Shebra, my alarm bells go off immediately. And uh, I start thinking, are we going down that Guerlain route of Mitsuko? Let's see. Because, you know, I told you, you could check out the review of my um, other Shebra fragrance that I reviewed. Liz Claiborne from the 80s, which is an 80s version of Mitsuko. An homage, an 80s homage to Mitsuko. Is Halston a 70s homage to Mitsuko? Let's see. Middle notes. Marigold. Hmm. Marigold is um, the element that might have the jockstrap association that we see in episode 3 of, of uh, the Halston TV show. Carnation, Cedar, Orris Root, Rose, Jasmine, and Ilang Ilang. Base notes, Oak Moss, it is a Shebra, Amber, Vetiver, Incense, a Patchouli, Sandalwood, and Musk. Now the IFRA regulations in Europe do limit drastically, almost completely, the use of Oak Moss. But this baby ain't made in Europe. This one's made in the US. US of A, baby! So, in the back, let me zoom it in. 
we have the ingredients listed. And this one is made in the US of A. And if you look closely, but I'm going to just flip it now because it's so tiny anyway. We got that trickery and sorcery. We got the Avernia Furfuracea, which is the tree moss extract. And we also got the Avernia Prunastri, the oak moss extract listed in here. So we're talking Shebra, baby. Shebra. 70s Shebra. A very floral, fresh, green, and zesty in the opening. Smells of a blooming 70s flower. It takes you back. And it's very, very inviting. Now, Halston back then was released in different concentrations. There was the Pure Perfume, the Eau de Toilette, there was the Cologne and all that shebang. Now, we only have the Cologne. So, yes, you might say, well, this perfume has been toned down, like every reformulated fragrance nowadays, the glory days of the 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s is gone. So perfumes from that time that are still in production today are just a shadow of themselves. But let me tell you something. Really tall and thick trees cast long shadows. So yes, this one is a weakling compared to what it could be because I smell, I know what Sheepras smell like from the 70s. And uh, this one is as bland as bland can get in terms of intensity and in terms of lasting power. But for today's standards of a Cologne, this one is very, very, very well endowed. It lasts. <laughs> it has lasting power for a Cologne. And in fact, they're not lying to us. They're not telling us, this is another toilette. This is another parfum. No. It's a natural cologne spray. They're selling it to us as a light Shepra for 2021, which in itself already, if you think about it, is a paradox. Uh, I mean, who would want to sell a 70s Shepra in a cologne concentration nowadays? Nobody. Like, it's, it's a miracle that it's still in production to begin with. And the fact that then people purchased it blindly after seeing episode three of Halston is even more of a miracle, a little marketing miracle that a 70s Shepra fragrance gets such a revival in 2021 and sells out is a little miracle, whether you like the perfume or not. It's, I'm, it just tickles me. It, it, it gives me joy to, to think that a perfume like this could have a little tiny renaissance, even if just for a couple of weeks while the craze of the Halston TV show is going. Good for them. Now, or well, good for Elizabeth Arden in this case, because Halston, he's dead. It's not like he can profit from it anymore. Um... <clears throat> This one, for me, has been in the works for a long time, the review of this fragrance. Um, so I was planning on doing this one later on in the year when the days get a little bit colder. But since Netflix dropped it on me, I was like, OK, let's do it now. And I'm telling you this why, because and here we're going back to my initial statement, which is Bernard Chant, the perfumer. Uh, behind this perfume. So I have initiated a little series uh, secretly on Bernard Chant, which was supposed to play out a little bit later, but Netflix pushed it on to me, so I got to do it now, while uh, people are still interested in Halston. And I do want this perfume to get some attention, because it, it does warrant, it does merit attention. So I have decided to do the review earlier than planned originally. Why? Because of Netflix. But why did I plan on doing this review anyway? And what does Bernard Chant have to do with anything in my diabolical plannings? Well, Bernard Chant, let's get to a couple of uh, fragrances that Bernard Chant developed. He worked, uh, or worked for the IFF company. He developed a couple of interesting fragrances. 1966, Aramis, Aramis 900 in 1973, 1977, Aramis Devant, Gold by Aramis in 66, and JHL in 1982. For Coty, he did the uh, Improvu in 1965. For Estelle Lauder, he did the Alliage in 1972, Azur in 1969, Beautiful in 1985, Cinnabar in 1989, 
1968, Este in 1968, Este Extra in 1968, Ralph Lauren, Lauren in 1978, but what else did he do? Well, he made Halston in 1975, and then, before that, in 1971, Clinique, Aromatics Elixir. And guess what? Reviewed on my channel. Pattern is going to start forming soon. Link uh, um, in the card section up above if you want to see this one, the review of this one, and um, the link to the video will be also in the description box down below. And then uh, 1959, Cabochard by Gray. Now you see the pattern forming. So I had this. He also did the Cabochat Parfum and the Eau de Toilette 59, and then Eau de Parfum and Eau de Toilette re editions in 2019, which is what I have here. So there is a notion of Chypre that is so deeply rooted and connected to the feeling of Chypre that has been delivered to us by Bernard Chan. And Bernard Chan, I call this the Divine Bernard Chan Trilogy of Chypres, which is Cabochat 59, Aromatics Elixir 71, and Halston 75. It's literally, these are, this is the evolution of what we of that bitter smelling Shebra, of a specific type of Shebra, because Shebra has had an evolution throughout decades, okay? But this here, and it's so fascinating that it begins in the late 50s and it ends in 75. 59, 71, 75. And believe it or not, it does feel like the same perfume went through decades of evolution. It really does. It, they, you feel that they belong to the same family. Not just of Shebras, but the same family. That, the same father, okay? Maybe they got different mothers. But they got the same father. Bernard Chan is the same father of all three of them. And they are connected. There is that signature Bernard uh, Chan, or Chant. I don't know if I pronounced the T or not, but... There's that signature note. If she's a specific oak moss, deep, green, moldy, humid note in his Shepras that all three of these completely have, okay? Uh, the most powerful still to date being Aromatics Elixir. But, not, but that, not just because uh, originally when it was first launched, it was strong. I mean, they're all watered down in, in the current formulations today, but what we mustn't forget is also who produces them nowadays, who owns them, you know. So we got Lalique has now uh, the distribution and production rights to Cabochat, to Grey Cabochat. So we got Lalique dealing with this Chypre in the current formula, in the current state that Cabochat is in. Lalique has conformed completely with European regulations. And this one is made in France, and there is absolutely no more oak moss. I'm reading the ingredients just to be double sure. There's no more oak moss in the current formulation of Cabochat. It used to be an oak moss bomb. So it all depends who's producing them today. So Lalique is making this one. Clinique is still making Aromatics Elixir. And then we got Elizabeth Arden. Elizabeth Arden's take on Halston, American brand, still in American hands, partially, and still produced in America. So here we got still oak moss, but not two different types of oak moss listed, oak moss, tree moss. Here we got both. So America is still going strong with their oak moss as much as they can, as much as they're allowed to. And so obviously, had we smelled these fragrances in, in their first formulations when they were first released by the original houses that released them back then, we would have a different 
sensitivity, sensibility to them. However, there's 10 years of difference between the release of one and the other, and then five years of uh, difference between these two. So there's a sensitivity that changes and a shift in uh, the desirability of certain perfumes and smells that shifts throughout the decades. But Bernard Chant still delivered his own signature, just like Jacques Cavalier delivers his signature with every Louis Vuitton fragrance that he delivers. There's a certain type of rose smell that he has in his perfumes that you just recognize it's Jacques Cavalier. Here with Bernard Chant, we recognize the moldy, mossy oak moss, which in the new version of Cabochat has turned into a patchouli vetiver with a lot of rose in the eau de toilette. In Aromatics Elixir, it's uh, an ambery, caramelized, bitter oak moss. And in Halston, it's just pure. <laughs> as pure as a modern day Chypre Cologne formulation can be. It's a pure oak moss base that has the jasmine, the ylang ylang, the rose, it has the patchouli. What else does this dude have? Vetiver, incense, bergamot, peach. But the more it stays on the skin, the lighter it gets, the subtler it gets, and the further away we go from that concept I said at the beginning. Oh, there's peach, oak moss. Is this a Mitsuko from the 70s? It's not. Uh, it doesn't smell of Mitsuko at all. Maybe just a little bit for that moldy, oak mossy touch that it probably had bombastically, humongously higher amounts back in the 70s. It doesn't now. But still, it delivers the oak moss, and it delivers for those of us who like oak moss, a, a pleasure in smelling it, even though I don't want to say that this smell smells dated, but I do want to say that the moldiness of the oak moss smells like it's been closed away for a long time and now it's out in the open again and it's breathing for the first time after a long time. And it's very floral too. And it does have, like many oak moss, that have a lot of vetiver and patchouli to substitute parts of the oak moss because you can't use it in such high quantities anymore nowadays, that give it an ash tray aspect. And this has an ash tray aspect. Well, let's go back to episode three of the series. When Vera Farmiga, lover to bits, asks Obi-Wan Kenobi <laughs> slash Halston, you and McGregor, uh, to talk about his past. You know, there's a psychological aspect to it. He cries about remembering his past, yada, yada, yada. Anyway, long story short, he delivers. His homework was to deliver her three elements that are important to him, right? So he delivers um, orchids, which she says orchids have no smell, but he's like, he loves his orchids and he wants to be, you know, like, know it all. He's like, no, nah, there's this orchid that has a smell here. He delivers that one orchid that has a smell. She smells it. She's like, oh, interesting. Cigarettes that are sugared, sweetened, because we know tobacco is artificially enhanced nowadays anyway to get you addicted to it even more. So they add sugar to it. So he's the sweet smell of tobacco. And then the jockstrap of his lover, which is what made everybody want to buy this perfume because they all thought by buying this, they're going to smell a big old dick that's been sweating and squirting all day. Like, there's no mid-terminology you can use. That's exactly what it is. And Vera Farmiga plays along very well. She takes the drug strap, closes her eyes, shoves that thing up her nose, and inhales it with all her might and glory. And then the perfume appears. And great marketing, because this does not smell of jock strap, except for little hints of it. And where are the hints? The hints of the jock strap are in the marigold. Marigold is a very earthy flower. It's an orange looking flower. It can be yellowy orange. The leaves are green and dirty. You touch them, they're almost like they're, they're almost hairy. They're not, but they're beefy. But when you rub your fingers on, most more than the flower, it's the leaves. When you rub your fingers on them and you smell them, your fingers smell of soil, uh, green soil and, um, and oily. Dirty, like sex, like a plant sex which brings me to this gorgeous treasure here, which is completely marigold. So if you want the jockstrap experience with bubblegum <laughs> and rose, 
go for Vivian Westwood's boudoir because this is where it's at if you want the jockstrap marigold. Mm. <laughs> this is where the marigold is at. But I can envision that marigold in here was more pompous with more oak moss in the 70s, hence delivering that sexual tension. Because that marigold is in the mid notes in this fragrance. And marigold is what delivers the dirtiness. So that's the jock strap. The cigarette is the ashtray uh, component smell of, um, well, they list it as incense, although. Incense is very tamed here. They, I think they really save money, cut down on incense. They, they, there's not a lot of it, you know. But the ashtray smell is due to patchouli and vetiver with oak moss. So we got the jockstrap in marigold. Patchouli is in the uh, ashtrays in the patchouli and vetiver, mostly in the oak moss. And then the orchid. Well, maybe they did extrapolate the smell of that orchid that he brought to the table, but we don't have an orchid listed in the ingredients nowadays. So. There's melon, bergamot, carnation, orris root, jasmine, rose, ylang ylang. Everything is dosed very delicately, though. Sparingly and delicately. And this is where a lot of people say, a lot of people, you know, us perfume people, ah, oh, it's, you know, Halston is just the shadow of itself. It's not what it used to be. It doesn't matter, though. I like the elegance of it. I like that it's toned down. I like that it's... It, this is why I say tall trees, thick tall trees, cast long shadows. Yes, this this one, you smell it and you know, oh wow, this in the 70s must have been a beast. But it's beautiful that it's toned down because the shadow that it casts, it casts shapes of these shadows on the floor. And these shadows are remind us of the 70s. They, they hint delicately elegantly at the 70s because the 70s are far away the 70s aren't here we're in 2021 well the day i'm reviewing this perfume review so the 70s are far they are misty the photos taken in the 70s the analog photos because there was no digital well there might have been already the evolution of the development of digital but photos were an analog and the polaroids the fo they're fading photos fade polaroids fade memories fade books Paper self-combusts. The fact that book, you know, they actually paper self-combusts. Read it, you guys. And it has a special special smell. Old books, they, they start turning brown. They, they burn themselves. They auto-combust. Glass melts with time. It's liquid. And the old, when you really go to really ancient mansions that have ancient glass, it's wavy. It's because with time, it melts. It's a very slow process, but glass turns to liquid again because it is liquid to begin with. And so this is a memory of the 70s. It's okay that this perfume is more toned down today. It's okay that it is watered down. It's okay that it is a shadow of itself because it is a shadow of the 70s. But because the 70s were this tall, big, thick tree, the 70s know how to cast their shadow. And the 70s managed to survive through Halston in a very special way. Um, this perfume was released in 1975, so it was released three years before Yves Saint Laurent's opium. And Yves Saint Laurent's opium was a return to oriental grandeur and would open the floodgates to the 80s. This, is, this doesn't have that oriental touch in it. This is not opium yet. We're not yet there yet. This is, bef this is a predecessor of opium. And this one delivers that sophisticated, detached, you know, Western society vision of elegance through Shepra, because Shepra was all the rage back then. And I, I, we do know that Halston did play with tie-dye and materials that could be reminiscent of Oriental aesthetics. But fundamentally, he was a businessman that had a vision for 
money earning America that was in in, 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 in its flower, in the bloom of, of capitalism and Wall Street, and um, it was, you know, coming huge in the 80s, Wall Street would be king and then would collapse, <laughs> Black Monday. Um, and that whole mentality of earning money and being business savvy and dressing up expensively to go to work in Manhattan, private jet, chauffeur, being driven car, darling, expensive clothes that look chic and effortless and the perfume had to go along with it but everybody could smoke everywhere back then you could smoke in the car in the taxi in, at the bar in the restaurant in the lounge at home in the airplane um and in the office and so the perfume had to play with that the perfume had to live in a symbiotic relationship with the environment you were in and of course halston played with the extreme simplicity minimalism of the 70s but the drugs, the sex, the rock and roll through cigarettes. And of course, those times were roaring times. People were all over the place, especially people with money. So the perfume needed to be elegant, but also needed to say, there's a skank underneath that surface because I'm all polished when I take my photo shoot, when I get my photo taken for the cover of uh, Time magazine or what have you. But then when night falls, I'm a hoe. And I black out uh, high and uh, mighty and I don't know what happened to me the next day. And the perfume needs to play that duality. It's that balance. And Halston smells of the memory of that when that was a thing. And now we're living in other times where life has become much more boring for most of us and it's, you know, restrictions have made us very bland. And the kids today that are partying their lives away, it's a different type of partying. It's a different type of living. It's like a influencer, healthy type of living, even though it's a destructive living. It's destructive in different ways. It's not... It's, uh, I have the feeling that today's destructive partying, uh, self-destructive, is more um, egotistical. It's, it's a very um, when you're like a Scrooge, like Scrooge McDuck, uh, missing the adjective. The opposite of giving, not taking, but uh, when you hoard everything for yourself. Um, I hate when I miss a word. So, to, so what I want to say is today's energy about the youth partying themselves to death. In the 70s, it was a very giving time. So you would give everything of yourself at, at those parties uh, while you're high and mighty. It would be... And the perfume reflected that total abandonment to pleasure and, and giving. It was very altruistic. While today, all these Oompa Loompas from TikTok and uh, YouTubers and what have you, influencers, rich bitches, jet setting around the world, they're very anally retentive. There's nothing giving. The parties are only amongst the selected few friends with the private DJ and caviar served and... Everything is aseptic and clean. Even if they do drugs, it's still clean. It's still... There's no sweat involved. There is no... dirt involved. Everything is still clean. And there are white, clean... spaces and mansions with swimming pools. And everything is... <sighs> chill and clean. Oh, well, back then it wasn't. It was dirty. It was very dirty. And, uh, but very giving. And so this perfume smells of the memory of how it used to be, of how that giving used to be. And it does make you sad when you think that you can't have a similar perfume today because, it, it, because today is not about giving. Today is all about taking and keeping to yourself. And um, hmm. I'm still missing the word. It's not about... The opposite of altruism. 
when you're a Scrooge, what are you? Oh my God, why am I brain dead? I just, the right word. Um, and interesting that Jack points out, I don't know though, a lot of clubs in Europe are so dirty and um, the sweat is rampant. Yes, but that's not what I'm talking about. That's not what I'm talking about. Selfish. Thank you, Mr. Philip Fabulous. Selfish. Ah, that's the one. Thank you. A selfish is the, is the word I'm looking for. So there's this selfish attitude today. And even though there are these, and greedy too, olfactive stories. Yes, thank you. That's a good one. Selfish and greedy. So there's this whole attitude of selfish greed in the way you live a certain type of rich lifestyle that back then was not the case. And so, so today you would live out that lifestyle by buying some expensive niche fragrance, okay? Or, or you would go that hyper male route and you would go for Dior's Sauvage. Dior's Sauvage is meant to be like Halston's Halston. Dior Sauvage of the 2000s, of the 2010s, is supposed to be the 2010s version of the 70s Halston. So you, you, you see how different it is. Now, but toning it all down, watering it all down, delivering this formula today that a lot of people are disappointed with because it's so watered down. To me, it's so poetic that it's so watered down, that they're so honest about it, calling it a Cologne and not some higher concentration. And just delivering this delicate floral shipra with real oak moss. Just telling us, hey, you know what? That's what this smells of. It smells of like, hey, yeah, back then times were rough and tough on a lot of people. But boy, we lived. We really lived. And the perfume doesn't just spit on you. You know, it doesn't, it doesn't barf on you that like kind of pleasure that they felt back. No. It's toned down, it has mellowed because it's wiser, its party days are long gone, and it whispers to you, and it just tells you like, we lived, we really lived, boy were those the times. Want to care to look at my album of photos, they're fading, but look, look at the, our smiles, look at the joy, yeah, look at also the pain in our eyes, but even the pain, we shared it. We didn't hide it. We didn't try to, you know, retouch on Instagram a photo of our miserable lives and make it look like we're living the life of the rich and famous. In our eyes, you, you, you can see the pain. In our eyes, you can see the misery. In our eyes, you can see the pleasure. Um, look at my album of photos. They're fading, but, but they're so real. They're much more real than a lot of the shit that's being manufactured today. And yes, I am... I have mellowed. I am weaker than I was because I am older. But the memory that is also slowly fading is such a poetic thing. And, and I don't care if Elizabeth Arden, the brand, just wants to cheap out and, you know, cut on ingredients and use cheaper ingredients, you know, to maximize profits. Because, I mean, this is a cheap, it's around 20 bucks for 100 mil. What do you expect? It doesn't matter if they're doing it to kind of there could be many reasons why they do it. Either they have to cut down on costs if they still want to keep producing this perfume, because otherwise they're going to have to discontinue it because nobody would buy it if it would cost more. Or they want to maximize profits and just earn as much money as they can on whatever is left of this perfume. It doesn't matter. It doesn't really matter. The fact is it still exists. It only whispers. But it whispers something very precise and specific. And, and spe very precise and specific. It whispers to you a concept of remembering specific times and how giving they were. And that's rare to find in a perfume. I am personally not a huge fan of the smell of this one. This is not like, I'm not craving it. It's not like I want to wear it every day. But when I do wear it, I get that sadness of the mellowing down, of the slowing down, of reminiscing. 
I get the, the memory of how much a life was within a certain epoch, decade, and within certain people. And, and that is beautiful. That is poetic. That is why this perfume is worth getting, even if just to have it as a reference point to a very specific time in, in, in perfume and fashion history. Sure, you could hunt down vintage bottles. Sure, you could hunt down vintage formulations. But I'm very interested and curious about these current formulations of these perfumes that are considered cheapies. And I'm always fascinated by how they develop. So, in fact, that's why I have the three, the Divine Trinity of Chypres by Bernard Chan, which is Cabochat from the 50s, Aromatics Elixir, early 70s, mid-70s for... Um, Halston. There's a sadness to this perfume that um, is beautiful. It's like, you know, looking through, literally looking through one of those Polaroid books by Andy Warhol that he took throughout, you know, the 70s and, and well, 60s, 70s and 80s. And you get to see the smiles and the glitz and the glamour, but they're fading. So, uh, it's a lot to take in, even in its current state, because it moves you, and it, it, it's not an easy perfume. It doesn't just smell pleasurable or pleasant. Uh, it makes you think. And so I thumb it up. Is it very wearable and, you know, desirable? I mean, sure, if you love this type of Bernard Chan Chypres, then you're going to love this one because this one is going to be like the lighter sister of, of these two. The the two predecessors that came before Halston. Halston is like a more evolved version of a Chypre. It's like Bernard Chant learned more about how to tame the Chypre genre. And with Halston, he delivered a more quintessentially pure lined, streamlined Chypre while he was still developing the concept with these two. Um... So, truth be told, you know, I don't gravitate to either one of these three. I love them for different reasons. Uh, I don't love to wear them as much. Okay, I know I love my Aromatics Elixir, but you see, I don't use it as much. It's like, uh, it demands attention in a way that, well, just check out the review. I've reviewed it already. But it demands attention in a very specific way, and I'm not always ready to give it the way I want to give it. <laughs> Back to this one, Elsa Peretti, who was a muse and model to Halston and then started working for Tiffany. By the way, at Tiffany's, you can still buy Elsa, per uh, Elsa Peretti's um, little silver versions of these flasks that you could, as necklaces, uh, you could put water in it, put a flower in it. They're still manufactured today. Beautiful. I mean, to her dying day, she worked for Tiffany's. So she designed this little bottle all in glass for the actual um, splash version. And they said, oh, it looks like a penis. I'm like, girl, no. <laughs> to me, it doesn't. But anyway, so again, allegedly, Myth wants it. I don't know that it was the first bottle that was asymmetric in a way. So, you know, you can watch the show and in episode three, they explain it like we can't put the perfume into, we can't pour the perfume into the, um, into the glass sideways, we need the opening of the perfume has to be at the top. But Halston said, no, I want it to the side. It's more blah, blah, blah. I'll pay more for the machines to be adapted so they could pour perfume to the side. Everything has to be asymmetric and phallic, they said. This is not phallic. You want to see something phallic? This is a phallic fragrance. This is um, a sculptural piece. It's an Yves Saint Laurent perfume. You want a phallic perfume? Here you go. A very delicate glass in a vial. This is L'Homme, Yves Saint Laurent. The design of the bottle was made by Jean Nouvel. This is a 90 ml eau de toilette. And then you hold it and you pull it out. And you have your little perfume. And then you got the little, the sperm inside is the little sperm swimming. It's the YSL logo that's kind of getting ready to burst as you use the fragrance. And this is the stopper or the metal with the stone inside. It's very, very heavy. You can call it the balls of this, the sack 
of the bottle. So we have had evolution of the phallic symbology in fragrances uh, compared to this one. Oh, this is a joke, you know, that girl. Oh, check this out. Check my lightsaber out. So you know what I mean? We could do better when it comes to phallic shapes. However, it is beautiful. It's delicate. It looks fragile because it's all twisted and turned and you, you see, it, I mean, even um, this, the, the side of it, it's not straight. It, it kind of tilts that way, that way. And then here it tilts again that way. And it still tilts that way. So it's, it's not straight from any angle. And it's like a drop. To me, it's like a drop of water, of a liquid. Could be a drop of sperm, maybe. Sure, I could give you that, but it looks fragile and delicate. And the smell is fragile and delicate as well. And the more it dries down and the more you get the floral aspect of it, the uh, the carnation... I mean, the, you get that marigold starts slowly dampening out and the carnation kind of takes more center stage. But you, you do sense that there's that buttery ilang ilang, just a little bit of it. And uh, jasmine, not in Dolik at all. So even there, we don't get that poopy smell that jasmine can deliver like it does in Joy by Jean Patou. Uh, and the more time passes... And the more it just settles into a very, very delicate orris rooty oak moss. Bediver and patchouli are always also there, obviously. But orris root oak moss. Suede, delicately leathery oak moss. And that's when it dies. It shows its true face. It says, hey, I used to be a beast back in the day. You would have not been able to resist me. But today... I'm tired. But the memory is there, and it's a beautiful memory. A little bit dangerous memory, too, but a beautiful memory, nevertheless. Longevity, eh, you can get five hours out of it. Projection, arm's length. Like the first blast when you spray it on, you get this perfume blast, uh, floral smell, uh, 10 minutes. 10 minutes in, then it's at arm's length. And that's it, delicate, cologne, refreshing. You could use it up to spritz yourself up throughout the day. Although, be careful, because this little uh, nozzle thingy here, it just comes off very easily. So if you put this in your bag, this can fall off very easily. And then the sprayer, if it gets pressed, you're going to, it's a mess. Get it if you want memory. If you want memory in a bottle, then buy the current formulation of Halston. Thank you for watching my review. Let me get to your uh, comments. Happy Day says it's priced well. Audrey says yes. And the young ones with Rick. OK, I have no clue. <laughs> like in the end of the show. Oh, yeah, everything simmers down. Exactly effective. Uh, Obi-Wan Kenobi slash Halston. He he kind of whew, the memory of it. It's just like driving into the sunset. Driving into the sunset. Um, MK says, they come. phallic doesn't always mean straight, hard, and firm. Halston is still very phallic to me, representative of one specific category of men. I'm not talking... It's just, it's not a shape of a penis to me. Sorry. So, I've never seen one that shape. <laughs> and I've seen a few. <laughs> Mr. Philip Evans says, the bottle reminds me of the shape of Eden, especially the curved neck. Let's compare it. <laughs> I mean, yeah, sure. They're both playing with proportions. Um, but it then really plays with a leaf shape, while this one is kind of like a drop. I mean, you could say they have similarities, for sure. They're kind of born from that same concept, in a way. Uh, this being one of the loves of my life, though, Eden. Um, 
Hakka says, uh, who designs these bottles? <laughs> well, this bottle was designed by Elsa Peretti, a woman. And uh, this bottle was designed by Jean Novel. I think the cap does look like the tip of a you-know-what, says Madonna Fitzgerald. Look, look scientific too, says Jack. Does it vibrate, says Kira? No, it doesn't. <laughs> Loving the YSL bottle, Eve was so naughty. Uh, this was designed after Eve died. This has nothing to do with Yves Saint Laurent. Lord says, to me, my first impression of that bottle was a little winky. Ah, like a little tiny one, like a dinky. Yeah, I don't know. But yeah. Jacob, you've got to try Ciara by Revlon. It's amazing. Great unisex fragrance. Of course, it's on the list for to be reviewed. Mr. Philip Fabio says, I mean, I'm all for not indulging in harmful substances. Didn't do any of those as a teenager, but damn, today's youth is sterile. Yes, very. And Darla says, what a beautiful narrative for this sense, memory, a gentle precision, a bit of shimmering sorrow in there. Perfection, Darla, that's exactly what, what it, where it's at. They don't smoke, don't drink, don't do drugs, don't party. They just do TikTok, says Mr. Philip Fabulous. And they do OnlyFans. <laughs> TikTok and OnlyFans. <laughs> now all the kids vape and think cigarettes are disgusting. Mm. Daniel says, uh, veganism has become a substitute religion. I have no quarrel with people who decide to be vegan per se. It is the evangelical element I hear from many of the vegans which annoys. Debbie says, yep, lots of vegan potheads. Jack says, weed has become med medicalized. Yes, in many countries. Mr. Phillips says, I was shocked to learn today's teenagers are raging about healthy lifestyle. Being vegan has replaced being a pothead. Go figure. <laughs> Audrey says, everything nowadays would be described as clean, sterile, and symmetric. You're not uh, considered beautiful if your face isn't enlarged, symmetrical, and injected with foreign substances. Delta Works uh, H Cream says, I imagine Amy Winehouse smelled like Halston. Yeah, she could have. Although, I think she was also into the sweet chulies back then. People don't have enough left to give to party like that anymore. That is also true, says Jack. Um, happy days. Is this perfume available now? I'd honestly never heard of Halston until last week. Yes, it's still available uh, in production by Elizabeth Arden. Hold on, let me just put this beautiful glass bottle down uh, where it's safe because I don't want it to get damaged. Amelie says, I love this one. And Audrey says to Rich Mitch, Jacob said there's oak moss and other mosses. It's manufactured in the USA. Yes, Rich Mitch. Uh, this one has a lot of oak moss in it. Yeah. It has tree moss extract and oak moss extract. Evernia, fru um, Evernia prunastri, or what's it called? Evernia furfuracea and Evernia prunastri. Audrey says, I love Shepra scents so much. Imagine wearing all three of those on your skin. I mean, all right. I will imagine. We just did Halston, then we sprayed Kabosha, and now we're going to kill it off with aromatics. <laughs> yes, Queen, let's live a little. Oh. I'm gagging. It's it's like soap. Okay, give it a minute. I think it's the jock strap that sold it. Yes, Mr. Phil Fab, definitely. What does the orchid smell like that day? No, there's no orchid in here. Any resemblance to aromatic elixir? Um Yeah, of course. They're all made by the same person. It has resemblance to aromatic elixir. Uh in that moldy green, moldy green oak moss touch that is typical to Bernard Chant or Chant. Audrey says, oh my goodness, is the top of the bottle matte? It looks super satisfying. And it's, it's glossy, actually. 
but it's this beautiful 70s type of, or early 80s even type of sandy ochre beige and it's so organic because you can you hold it see what I mean like it really feels like something that you can easily wrap your hand around like that so the bottle is very tactile it, it has a very tactile quality to it I'm surprised it didn't stock up on the perfume says Mr. Philip Fabulous uh, or maybe it's a marketing trick scarcity darling it's very Hermes of Halston <laughs> <laughs> to not produce enough of these and uh, drive the prices up um i don't know careful take of those vapors haha <laughs> as is doing i'm telling you um jesus says the bottle looks like a dog's wee wee maybe halston was a different kind of sister oh child no Gary says, I'd have a headache if I sprayed all of those at once. Amazing review. Thank you, Dacob. Thank you guys for tuning in. Subscribe to my channel. Thumb up this video if you liked it. Let me know what your thoughts are on Halston TV show and perfume in the comment section down below. Um, push the join button next to the subscription button. Become a member today. Gain access to extra perks. You can also join me on Patreon. Super Dacob all spelled together to gain access to extra perks there as well. Amongst the many perks is being listed at the end of every video uh, in the credits end roll as co-producers of the Fashion Bunker. Thank you so much to all my patrons and um, members who have already pledged. You can follow me on social media. Uh, Super Dacob all spelled together. Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. You can also follow me on my Chanel dedicated Instagram profiles. Coco Chanel is in my house and Coco Chanel Privé. You can also follow me. Now... I'm in this transitional phase because I initiated a new perfume channel only dedicated to perfumes. However, until that channel is big enough, I'm still posting new um, videos, new perfume videos, mostly to my main channel, but they're shifting slowly but surely to my perfume channel. So you might be seeing this video either on my main Super Dacob channel or maybe on my Essentially Dacob perfume channel. So be sure to subscribe over there as well. Essentially Dacob spelled essence then a minus then t-i-a-l-l-y like a, it's a word game of essence and potentially essentially Jacob. that's my perfume channel be sure to subscribe there as well and follow all my perfume shenanigans now let me see how this thing is smelling after okay first of all it looks super oily on the skin but that's because of aromatics elixir because aromatics elixir does that oily effect which we don't really and I get to see, hold on. We don't really get to see it, but they blend in very well. You get even more, you get a turpentine. It almost smells like turpentine. The three of them together really don't clash at all. They work very well together, <laughs> believe it or not. You feel that they have the same father different mothers but same father so the DNA of the three of them together is very harmonious uh, believe it or not Cabocha in my case Eau de Toilette by Lalique Grey but produced by Lalique Aromatics Elixir by Clinique and Halston by Elizabeth Arden the three of them together sure why not it works really really well but it does have a hint of turpentine which I personally find a little kinky. Until next time, guys, thank you so much for watching. Never forget to never give up on love. Love you all. See you soon. Take care. Bye.